Okay, final realm of what one looks for in a mate across lots and lots of different species, which is not only someone who appears healthy and symmetrical and these exciting secondary characteristics that are markers of lots of fertility and also whatever everybody else thinks is attractive, you suddenly do as well. The last thing that tends to be a theme through lots and lots of species and in every human culture is being attracted to someone who's uh, kind of just like you are being attracted to someone who is similar. And the term for this is homogamy. Homogamy, polygamy, monogamy. Homo In this case, homogamy mating with someone who is homogeneous, who is similar in traits of yours. And across cultures, including in the United States, people are extremely homogamous in who they wind up marrying. Here are the statistics. When you look at couples in this country, there is better than a 90% chance likelihood of them sharing the same religion, of being within three years of age of each other, of sharing the same race, the ethnicity, sharing the socioeconomic status of their childhood, did they both growing up poor, wealthy, whatever, and sharing political views. More than 90% concordance in this country on those traits markers of homogamous preference for someone who is just like you. Stepping down a bit, not in this range, but more than 40% homogamy for a couple having IQs that are within, I don't know, five points of each other, having similar levels of education. Those are very homogamous traits. Then a whole bunch of weirdo minor ones, which nonetheless are still statistically significant, a 20 to 40% likelihood of people of couples being the same height, not the same height, but say, for example, in the top 10 percentile of height for their sex, scale to what's within gender, weight, hair color, and then you get into this bizarre world of lung capacity, of width of nostrils, of width of eyes. People have studied these, and these are traits that show significant homogamy in this fairly low range, but nonetheless significant at a higher than expected rate. What are these weird things being about? These are probably surrogate markers for preferring people of similar race, similar ethnicity. That's probably where those numbers are coming from. So what's this about? This is suddenly barreling us back into the world from many lectures ago of you don't want to mate with someone who shares half their genes with you, the dangers of inbreeding, but you also don't necessarily want to mate with someone who is so unrelated that there is no drive of kin selection for cooperation. We have now heard from bird species to humans, you get the optimal fertility somewhere around third to fourth cousins you get the optimal fertility under circumstances that select for a fair degree of homogamy across different cultures. And historically, this is no surprise at all that there is a great deal of homogamy. Various studies have shown that your average traditional hunter-gatherer winds up being married to somebody who grew up less than 40 kilometers away from them. Studies show that people in traditional agricultural villages in the developing world wind up being married to someone on the average less than 10 kilometers away from them. You are getting an awful lot of people winding up being married with individuals who look a lot like them. And back to that issue of partial relatedness, third to fourth cousins. Yes? Okay, well, though, look around the room. This is a very heterogeneous corner of the planet we've come up with here. Yes, it's very different when you look in more homogeneous societies there, but when you begin to look at the increasingly diverse Western European ones, you see a fair amount of homogamy going on. Very interesting data. Iceland, yet another of our good old Scandinavian. Is Iceland technically Scandinavian, or are they just like good guys who should be Scandinavians. They're so dull and healthy and sensible. Okay, so in those sensible non-Scandinavian Icelandics who have like 
I don't know what, 300,000 people in the whole country, and all of them are no more than six cousins apart, and all of them have just fanatically clean records going back centuries as to who was married to who. Studies have now been done looking over the course of 200 years in Iceland of how closely related different couples were, and what you see is optimal fertility, optimal number of children who survived into adulthood, you get from third to fourth cousin marriages. Recent studies showing that. One additional interesting version of this homogamy stuff, which is in the United States, you see something slightly different. You see an age factor coming in here, which is people are more likely to make less homogamous choices as to their mates the younger they are when they get married. What's that, uh, what's that a surrogate for? The incredibly depressing fact that on the average people get more and more close-minded as they get older. You see the greatest heterogamy in marriages, the greatest likelihood of people marrying someone with a very different background, the younger they are in the early 20s is when you find the peak for a lot of these traits, when you find the least homogamy. One interesting exception to that, or a partial exception, which is with religion, and what you see is you look at you know, people getting married in their early 20s. This is the likelihood of marrying somebody from a different religion. And then it goes way down in the 30s and 40s. And somewhere between 50 and 60, there's another little blip that goes up. And this has been documented in a number of studies. What's that blip about? Any theories? Oh, OK. Somebody stick there. Fewer options for mates, that's one depressing possibility. And just wait until like you're in the nursing home and like anything that moves you in print on yes theory. We're not gonna have kids anymore, so they don't need to worry about talking down the Okay, so the issue of if you do that, if you've waited long enough that you're not gonna have kids, that you're not gonna have all these fights of are you gonna be a uh, you know, a Mac family or a PC family or all those sorts of things that can tear people apart according. Okay, so that's a possibility. How about another one? Yeah. You're reflecting your mortality. Okay, you're reflecting on mortality and you're deciding enough of that nonsense. Who cares? This is someone who matters. Yes, that's a possibility. What else? Was that an idea? Midlife crisis, so it's either you get a convertible or you marry someone from, you know, you know, from Tierra del Fuego or something. So all of those seem to go into it. One additional one, which I find to be absolutely like wonderful in terms of just how bizarre it is, which is when they interview people, what you also see is the ones who tend to have this peak, they had been in long-term relationships with the individual. What was that about? They're waiting for their parents to die so they don't kill them by marrying this person. <laughs> that appears to be part of that scenario, which is you know, once they're dead, then we can go get married because I couldn't possibly do this to them before then. And that appears to be part of this peak also.